Hi, my name is Richard Azariga from Microsoft. In this video, we're going to look at how to build custom applications on top of the brand new Office Graph within Office 365. So the Office Graph is a sophisticated machine learning layer within Office 365 that's going to pick up on all the different activities that users have with other users and that users have with different objects within the service. So it could be a site or a document that we pick up on some of the activities that a user has with it. And the Office Graph is going to use all that it learns to deliver entirely new insights for a user. So one of the best ways to illustrate this is to look at an active application that is available today in Delve. So Delve was a new capability that we added to Office 365 last week that leverages the Office Graph. And let's take a look. So here I am. There's a couple of different clients for Delve. This is Delve within a browser. So I just went to Office 365 in my browser, and ultimately in the sweet bar for uh, customers where this is already rolled out, I have an option to, to look at Delve. And, and ultimately what you're seeing here is being delivered through the Office Graph, through all that machine intelligence of picking up on what Delve thinks is relevant to me. And, and this might be displayed for a number of different reasons. So I can see a few items here. Here's one that is displayed because maybe nine of my colleagues recently viewed this. Here's one where 11 colleagues recently viewed it. In fact, this one is pretty popular. It has uh, 46 views in all. Um, it might be because I liked it at some point in time or I modified it at some point in time or one of my direct colleagues modified something. So again, it's going to learn over time what the most relevant things are to display for a user. And again, this is all powered through that Office Graph. The cool thing is there's a number of different ways we could deliver this. So this happens to be in a browser. There's also a Delve native client that I can go in here. And you can see it's the exact same results. So I see uh, very similar um, results as what I saw in the browser. This just happens to be more of like a rich client application. This is actually a pretty neat one because I can pull things up side by side. So if I click on a, a document, you can see it'll actually pull the document side by side in the browser and I can ultimately kind of click through different things one by one. But ultimately Delve, whether it's the client or the browser, it's gonna be a very similar experience. Kind of looks like Pinterest and again, it's gonna be powered off that Office Graph. So what, what I kind of started to attack as like my first Office Graph app was, let me take some of the things that Delve does and just deliver it in a different type of way. So one of those ways I decided to kind of go after it was, you know, this has the number of views of a document. What if I, instead of doing a, a normal view, maybe I want to maybe put more emphasis on things based upon the number of views that they have. And so that's what my first um, Office Graph app does is it's going to basically kind of emphasize things based upon their popularity. So let's take a look at it. So first of all, um, the Office Graph is being delivered using some of our search technology. So if I want to use some of that search technology that lives within Office 365 and SharePoint Online, um, I'm going to use some of those SharePoint APIs. So um, what I started with here is just a normal SharePoint app project. One of the things I want to highlight is if I go into my manifest file here, one of the important things is that I have a permission to do search, right? So if the, the Office Graph leverages our search technology, I need to be able to do searches. And that's what this is saying is my app is going to have the ability to search on behalf of the user. So it's going to take that user into context so everything's security trimmed nicely for me in the um, results that come back. So the next thing that I needed to do is, is actually go out and make a call to search. So um, in my page here, I have just a simple call here where I'm using the search API that you can see here, and I'm doing a normal query, uh, but there's one kind of interesting thing in the query. So first of all, I'm saying, um, I'm just doing a wild card, so get me everything, but get me everything that matches this Office Graph query. So we had, the Office Graph has a specific query syntax. It's called the Graph Query Language that I can use to query against the Office Graph. So you can see here, I'm doing a graph query. And the Office Graph is all about actors, objects, and the connections between those that we call edges. And so in this case, I'm saying, go get me everything for me and the action that I want to get those for is 
Um, in this case, it's a number that represents this 1020. That's saying, go get me all the activity for me that's trending around me. So trending around me is that action of 1020. So there's a lot of different actions that I can use. I could do modified by me, liked by me. Um, I can do liked by others. So I don't have to use me as the actor. I can use very specific people. And I can combine all of these together to come up with these really elaborate graph queries. I mean, in this case, all I'm saying is I want the things that are trending around me. And then the rest of the syntax goes back to just typical search REST um, APIs. I'm going to say I want 50 items, and I'm going to select some specific managed properties. So doc ID, web ID, unique ID, um, a bunch of different managed properties that I'm going to want to come back in my search results. And then ultimately, once I get those search results back, I'm just going to process those like normally. So they're going to come back as just a normal primary query result in a, and a, res, a relevant result, results table that I can ultimately process through. Now, I'm going to put kind of a creative spin on this to be able to display things in different ways. Most specifically is I'm going to look at the view count and treat that very specially so I can actually maybe, again, put emphasis on things that are popular. So let's take a look at this thus far and then we'll go into kind of an, an additional kind of interesting concept with um, this Office Graph. So I'll go ahead and press play and we'll launch our SharePoint app. In this case I've already um, installed the app so I, I shouldn't get the normal prompt screen um, but this will go ahead and launch and there we go we get our visual depiction of what's popular so it's very easy for me just to glance at this and see some of the things that are popular so for instance I down here at the bottom I see there's something advanced development patterns for SharePoint apps um, up here at the top there's one on conceptualizing digital marketing and um, there's another one on legislative processes and again if I wanted to I could click on any one of these and it would actually launch into that actual item of the office graph but again, just kind of a cool way for me to, to visualize this using some of the really neat uh, data visualizations that are available to JavaScript. And this all um, resizes nicely as well if I want to. Okay, so um, pretty simple. I did a query. I'm displaying it a specific way. There's one thing that I think that's really key that maybe you picked up on, which is um, this is actually the pretty much the same search results that came back in Delve. Um, I, I just put a different data visualization on top of it, again, to emphasize, put an emphasis on popularity. Um, but another thing that's going on here is when I first glimpse at Delve, I notice that it's very visual. It's really more visual than a normal search results in SharePoint. A normal search results, in order for me to kind of get more insight into it, a lot of times I actually have to mouse over or hover over the result item, which brings up a hover panel. And then it might show me a preview of that. I noticed that here, these previews are already generated for me. So there, I already have all of these previews here. And, and really, the first thing I thought was, well, where are these coming from, right? Because in a normal search results, those are uh, rendered dynamically using something like the Office web applications. So um, the first thing that I did here was actually go out and use some of the, the developer tools to actually click on one of these images and see where it lived, right? Because actually a search index can't store a picture. It only stores uh, more binary type of things. Um, and, and in this case, I noticed that it was using a brand new layouts page or actually a layouts um, handler, uh, this get preview.ashx. And I'll kind of zoom in here. So I noticed that it was using this get preview handler um, and in it, it's passing a number of different parameters, like the actual files GUID, the site GUID, the web GUID, um, and even a doc ID. And so what I kind of looked to do was, could I use that same Git preview handler in my own applications in order to pull those visuals in? And they, it turns out the answer is yes. So um, I'll zoom out here and show you how I'm actually able to pull these same pictures in my little bubble app here um, where I have the exact same pictures. Now obviously I'm doing some cool circular croppings of that but ultimately the way I query those are going to be identical. So if I go into my code here one of the things that I'm doing is the different managed properties that I requested are all of those parameters that were on that git preview handler. So things like site ID, web ID, 
unique ID, and doc ID. Those are the five key managed properties that I need in order to generate one of those previews on the fly. So again, those are, those are the keys to making that preview work are these uh, four managed properties. Once I have those, I ultimately can generate a preview uh, based upon uh, the, the actual um, parameters and that handler file. So I'll go back in here into my page really quickly. And um, what we'll see down here at the bottom is that after I get all of those managed properties, one of the things I'm doing is I'm specifying the picture for that search results. And you'll notice that I'm using the get preview handler um, that's under layouts. Um, it needs to be using the host web. So we all know that then an app web actually hides some of the layouts pages. And, and this is a good example of one. So you can't use the app web URL. You need to use the host web URL. And then I'm ultimately passing it the file GUID, the site GUID, the web GUID, and the document ID. And with those four parameters, it's able to go and generate that image for me dynamically. So again, this was a really simple kind of first jump into using uh, the, the Office Graph and, and using the Search API to go and do um, graph query language to go and do specific graph queries against that Office Graph. But as you can see, um, it allows me to really deliver um, that Office Graph value, all the data and information that's in that Office Graph, almost any way that I can imagine. In this case, is uh, just kind of a really cool visual way based upon popularity. So hopefully this gets you interested in looking more into the Office Graph and building some intelligence and some cool visuals inside of your applications.